Hey guys, we're back with another slideshow show. I'm Chris from CKCC Radio, and that's Dan. What? Also from CKCC Radio. Mm, is that where I'm from? I think so, right? That's the thing, right? So we're going to do a slideshow. You know, last time we did one of these, I showed some pictures to Dan, and now he's going to return the favor and show some pictures to me. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to be doing this? I thought that's... I'm confused now. Uh-oh. Oh. I don't know how to... I don't know what to do. All right, Chris. I got 20 pictures for you. I'm ready. I'm ready to see these pictures. These 20 pictures are... Now, I believe there's 21 or 22. So there's a missing person or two. <laughs> okay. Um, I had to take them off a little bit. Uh, and these are 20 of the people, the men, who have their jersey numbers retired from the New York Yankees. Ooh, okay. Okay. Ah, oh, man. So that's... Yeah, I am a giant-ass Yankees fan, and Dan actually is as well. Boy, you got a giant ass? So, oh boy, tired Yankees. You're going to get me all, like, emotional for this, or when I start talking about the wonderful players. Well, most of them weren't were done before you were alive, so <laughs> don't get all worked up, okay? What's going to be hard mm -hmm. is I'm not going to know who's missing. Or maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Did you yeah. put them in a specific order or? <clears throat> well, they were in order. And then I realized I was at 19. So I went back and got somebody because they were very important. Okay. And then and then I didn't want to reorder everything. <laughs> so. All right. There well, is one person out of, out of, in place, out of place at the very end. All right. Fair enough. I was going through stuff. Anyway. All right. We ready? Yeah, let's do this. Here is number one, the retirement of the number one. <laughs> the literal number one, Billy Martin. Billy Damn. Martin. Billy freaking Martin. Now, Dude looks like my uncle, my, my aunt's husband. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. Billy Martin. He was uh, known for being a bit of a hothead. He's known for having been fired like 10 times in one season. <laughs> yeah, it was the... Remember, there was a commercial they did back in the 90s. I don't remember what brand it was for. It was like a bunch of claymation people, and it was Billy Martin firing somebody. It was part of the joke. <clears throat> it's like a chip commercial or something. I have to look that up. Yeah, Billy Martin, great player. Great coach. Hothead, though. All right. Who else numbers have they retired? Well, I mean, you might know who got number two. Oh, if you're doing this in number order, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Derek Jeter. Uh, Derek Jeter. I've seen him play tons of times. He's basically... I actually haven't been to a live baseball game since he retired. So I have, so I have seen him play at literally every Yankees game I have ever attended. Uh, I mean, technically me too, because I went to a playoff game in 2004, and I saw the Yankees <laughs> at the Minnesota Twins. Well, there you go. So... <laughs> he, uh... I couldn't see Derek Jeter, but I saw Derek Jeter. <laughs> Known for, of course, being the shortstop, right? That's yeah. basically his big position. And, shortstop. Uh... And one of the few Yankee captains, they don't always have, they hardly ever have a captain, actually. There's only been like five or six of them in history. There was a, there was a period of time where I wasn't, I wasn't big on Jeter because he was like, he was like the, the, the popular, the pretty boy. He was like the John Cena, the Yankees. And I was kind of like, oh my God, everybody talks about him. He's all over the place. I'm tired of this. Cause like. Because remember at the time, the 98, 99, 2000 Yankees were full of amazing players. 
So I thought it was only right that we, uh, that other people got recognition. And I was kind of in that state of mind where I didn't really want to focus on the overrated people, in my opinion. But of course, as the years went on, I, I started respecting him more and more as just a player. And I got over that whole aspect. And I was like, you know what? Oh, you what? reach, you packed him? Exactly. And I was like, you know what? I And now when I think back to that mindset, I don't, under, I don't understand it. Like, I'm sure at the time it made sense. But now I think back and I'm like, why did I ever feel this way? And he's a great player. And you know he's a great player because he's still respected by non-Yankee fans. And there's only a handful of Yankees who are respected by non-Yankee fans that came from this generation, and he is one of them. I was a Tino Martinez guy. Yeah, so was I. That was my favorite player. And Paul O'Neill was probably number two. Bernie Williams, probably number three. So... Miguel Cairo, solid number four. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right well, so that was number two so yeah, who the fuck is number three? Oh, i know who number three is would it be george herman ruth the babe so i've always said this about babe ruth and i think this is really important babe ruth is the perfect example of knock it off with the goddamn steroids look at what a great player he was he was a fat out of shape schmuck who smoked He's cigars, like chewed five tobacco. Five chili dogs during the fucking yeah. seventh inning stretch. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't need any enhancement to get to get by. So I think that's a real crappy thing with modern day sports right there. And Babe is the perfect example of... And he's the uh, the great Bambino, the... Uh, oh, wait, I thought you said the great Bambi. The great Bambi. That wimpy little deer. <laughs> yeah, of course that was... Was he the first number they ever retired? Maybe. 48, so probably. Yeah. I don't think they had any retired numbers before Babe. Babe would have been the first one. But yeah. Yeah. Nope. They're... The next guy was retired before him. Ah. Oh, yeah, because I know who number four is. So, yeah. Go ahead. Who would be number four? Mm. 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 <gasps> Lou Gehrig? Why didn't it not advance? <laughs> I still see the babe. Do I have to? You might have to. There see. we go. Yeah, I was. Re- I resized all the pictures. Apparently, I didn't resize Babe Ruth, so I used the mouse wheel to uh, make it bigger. That's fine. He's the luckiest man in the world. He's so lucky he had a disease named after him. Which is now no longer named after him. <laughs> yeah. They just, They took the ALS back. Ah, uh, Lou Gehrig. Yeah. Obviously, that's long before any of our times. Because he died in... Did he die before they retired his number? Or after? In the number was retired in 39. He died two years later. Okay, he died in 41. So, yeah. I mean, that's even before my parents were born. It's before the war. Yeah? Remember right when the war was starting. Well... Yeah, because 41 was, uh, I always get my dates mixed up. 41 and 45. Went Pearl Harbor was what year? Uh, I always get, I always get my years mixed up when I, when it comes to World War II. Pretty sure we weren't involved yet. No. Uh, when he did, but who knows? Ah, Lou Gehrig, yeah, great player. All right. Well, I know who number five is, so. Mm. Sure. Speaking of the war, he fought in it. He did. Joe DiMaggio, another Joe fantastic D. player. You don't have to zoom in too much on him. Not the. Uh... Why well, you don't want to see his ugly? <laughs> he's not the best looking man. Before. Ugly Italian face. Hey, easy. But yeah, Joe DiMaggio, number five. Hey, he might have an ugly face, but he fucked Marilyn Monroe. So, all the single numbers are retired on the Yankees. Yes. Yeah. In fact, one of them was worn by two people. Yes. We will only be talking about one of them, though. Can Ah, you guess which one? Well, 
it better be the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna feel really stupid here, but I'm blanking on number six. Yankee Clipper, baby. The Yankee Clipper, Lou Gehrig, Joey Bebe. Wait, what? What? I can't imagine I was Yankee Clipper. Why did I start saying Lou Gehrig? So number <laughs> six wasn't retired until six years ago. At one point, there was a future player who was given number six, and he fucking hated it because he realized that everyone wa- that that all the other guys had already led up to number six had already been greats and retired. And he didn't want to be number six, so he got his number changed. But this guy took number six instead later on. It's Joe Torre. Yes, Joe. That's right. He was number six. I always forget that that was the number he wore. I don't always remember the coach numbers. Like, that one, that one, some, those sometimes get get kind of mixed up there. But yeah, Joe Torre. That's right. They retired it's it for so him. It's so weird that managers dress like the players in fucking baseball. But I kind of like that because it makes them look like they are actually part of the team. You know, like, you know, when you watch the NBA and the NFL, they're all in suits or polos. But no, in baseball, they look just like the players. And I, I like and I respect that. Even though they're 80 fucking years old. I think Joe Torre is one of the best coaches they ever had. It's one of the best managers. Yeah. The best manager. The classic yeah. catcher becoming a manager. Because <laughs> that hasn't been done before. Or since. Uh, I'm only me. Mm, it might be an ongoing thing. It might be. Mm. Yeah, but I love I love Joe Torre. Now here's a guy that was number six at one point and was like, fuck that, change my number. <laughs> So they changed him to number seven. Yeah, I think if 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 you don't know anything else about uh about numbers on New York Yankees players, if anything else, you know that Babe was three, Gehrig was four, and Mickey was seven. Cause number seven is synonymous with Mickey Mantle. Like I, I can't even think of another famous number seven. When I think of number seven, I actually think of him. So, it's a very good list that you chose. All right, number eight. Bring it up. I know who it's not, and I know who it should be. It's fucking, it's not Bill Dickey, I'll tell you. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not. It's Yog. <clears throat> very nice man. Uh, we got a chance to work with him. At the Yogi Berra Museum, which is on the campus of Montclair State University, which is where I graduated. The uh, the PSA ad that we do for his museum was voiced over by me. I remember they were actually showing it at Yankee Stadium. And <laughs> I, guess, I guess they played it at a game that a bunch of my friends were at because they were playing the Mets. And all of a sudden, my phone just blew up that day. And they're like, oh my god, I just heard your voice at Yankee Stadium. Like... What the hell are you people talking about? They're like, the PSA aired. And I was like, that's actually pretty cool because we made that PSA in like 2007 and it was like 2010 when this happened. So they were actually still playing it. Because, you know, the college students got to do the the museum. And the museum is awesome. In fact, the museum is where my cousin Valerie had her wedding reception. So we got to just hang out in the museum and eat our wedding meal in the shadow of baseball greats. And they, the best part is they have this little tiny section for his time as a Met. <laughs> like, just like this little corner in one of the rooms. And it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, Yogi was a Met, so here's his stuff from there. But it's also a baseball museum too, like it's got other stuff than just yogi but it's mostly him so yogi was manager for approximately a million different times because every time steinbrenner would fire (laughs) billy yogi would take over for that day (laughs) yeah speaking of hotheads (laughs) oh (laughs) Uh, steinbrenner the 
famous Steinbrenner. And then he was actually like the, the main actual manager for a while too. But remember when famously, he- whenever those times when Steinbrenner and Billy would get into it, Yogi would be the manager that night. <laughs> remember when when uh, Steinbrenner hired George Costanza and then fired him, yes. like immediately. Uh, good stuff. All right. I also We're know... still on the single digits, so we got number nine now. Yes. It's Raj. The original home run king. For what What was it? What What year was the broken? 98, right? Yeah, 61 to 98. 61, 98. That's right. So, yeah, Roger Maris hit his 61 home runs. Yes, and... I remember when McGuire and Sosa started getting hot a year or two before the big year and they were like it's the race for roger or whatever and stuff like that and so they were already this was like in 95 or 96 they were starting to do the comparisons and they actually and in 98 they both passed him i watched that game live i was watching something else and espn came in with every at bat (laughs) well there you go every mark mcguire at bat that game well, I start I start getting a little rusty on some of the other retired numbers. So, in fact, and Roger I'm... Maris, who did not have a good time, because no. everyone hated him. That's a great movie, by the way. Sixty one, yep, fantastic movie. movie. Barry Pepper as a uh, Roger and Tom Jane. That was it. That was made for HBO, wasn't it? Yep. That was like made a... by Billy Crystal, baby. Ah, the man. Hey, I saw him at a Yankee game. Oh, yeah? Him and Robin Williams were there together. They put them on screen, and they weren't sitting that far from us. Of course, I didn't, like... Like, I physically saw them, but I didn't, like, go over and talk to them. Because, you know. Yeah, it's like one thing, thing, but they're at the ball game. I guess, you know, if it was, like, in a weird spot, maybe. You know, there's a lot of downtime in baseball. But, I guess yeah. if I was sitting a lot closer, I might have at least considered saying hi. But I was also I was a kid. I was with my dad, and you know, and you're like, I like city slickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next is number ten. So we're still going in order. Number it's ten. Phil Rizzuto. Phil Rizzuto. Okay. That's right. He was number ten. Scooter Rizzuto, who then became the uh, radio play-by-play guy. I I thought his commentary was good. He had a good he had a good voice for uh, for calling stuff too. Phil Rizzuto, a lot of Italians played on the Yankees. You never realize yeah. that. It's that New York I City Italians. I love, I, I love my Italian heritage, and I'm more Italian than Irish. I just got the super Irish last name because that happens to be my father's name. But my mother's an Esposito, which mm. is a very Italian name. My mother's side is, like, half Italian, half Irish, so... Well, that's just it, right? It's always the, the Irish cast, and the Italians. The Castellares and the Richies. Yeah, the, so. uh, the Irish and the Italians. are all, That's how it is. The I, freaking Irish and Italians, man. Both, both of my grandparents from families with eight children. <laughs> you know, the Irish and the Italian. <laughs> Next one, this is where we're going to get sad. We are now, there's no 12, there's no 13, there's no 14. We're going to number 15. And it's a sad story. Because he was in the middle of his career. Oh, no, I know who it is. And he died in a plane crash. Oh, and it is one of the rare Yankee captains. It's Thurman Munson. Thurman Munson, yeah. That is a sad story. Who was the, who's the Philly who just got, who did, who died in like a helicopter crash like two or three years ago? Oh, I don't know about that. I remember the guy had a boat accident, like a Marlins player like a couple of years ago. Last year, the year before. He had like a boat accident in the ocean and he died. I know it's always all all these tragedies are really sad, but this is it can't be. It's not as bad as Roberto Clemente was going to do fucking relief work, and his plane crashed. Yeah, jeez. Uh, Yeah, Thurman Munson, a very sad story, and he was like 
on an up on a career upswing too. It was in the middle. It was the middle of his career, man. But they retired that number mostly out of respect, right? I mean, he was the captain. Yeah, I mean, he probably could have would have had it retired anyway, but they retired it when he died because yeah, we retired it right away, like like immediately. So he was retired in seventy nine. He died in August. So yeah, I did it within within two months. And I'm dying. It sucks. Dude. Yeah, it's the middle of the season too. That's terrible. He was just on a plane. And it crashed. Uh, We're now going to the very next number, number 16. This guy was teammates with Raj and Mickey. Yep. It's Whitey Ford. Whitey. He sings the blues. Whitey. He sings the blues. He does. <laughs> Whitey Ford. Good old Whitey Ford. Yeah, he was... First uh, pitcher on the list, yeah. And that was uh, he was he was prominent in the like the that the whole '60s era yeah. of the Yankees. He was uh, in '61, played very very well by uh, what's his face? That was a rat a brat pack guy, guy that looks <laughs> really different. Have... Now, isn't one of the modern rules in baseball that a lot of pitcher numbers are high numbers? It's usually '50s and, and '70s. And he was number. 16. Was number 16. I don't think that's like a rule rule, but it's a thing. But nowadays we're seeing because so many te- – because baseball has been around for over 100 years, we're seeing great players with weird numbers now. Yeah, because they got to figure out what number they can even be. Because you can't, you can't yeah, retire like all the numbers. Guys in the, with numbers in the 70s and 90s now. And it's just like, okay. Event those three digit numbers are coming. I mean, eventually. I mean, when we get when we, by the time we get to Blurns, <laughs> yeah, all the whole, four digit numbers, all the whole numbers are retired in Blurns oh, yeah. ball. What's the next the, retired number? The chairman of the board. I don't even know Lee what the next board. one is. Oh, but I think you do. Do I? Yes. All right. It's well, not until so we skip seventeen. We skip 18, we skip 19, but we stop at 20. Oh, I know who number 20 is. It's Jorge. Jorge. That's a great, I love that picture of him, too. <laughs> this is the official picture on the MLB.com Yankees retired number list, by the that's way. Fantastic. All of these pictures are the picture from that what from that. Page. Okay, that's even better. <laughs> oh, that's a great expression on his face. I want to know what he's thinking there. Like, is he? Is, like, he, is, is he yelling at him, or is he, is he trying upset to tell about somebody, a call? Is yeah. he trying to tell his first baseman that he needs to be on the line? Or? Yeah, I don't know what he's saying there. <laughs> but he's actually playing. This isn't. This isn't uh, Coach Jorge. This is actually uh, Player Jorge. Player Jorge. <laughs> Player Jorge. But yeah, that was a. That was when I really became a Yankees fan was in the late 90s when he was... He wasn't even the main catcher at the time. Girardi was. Yeah, he was coming up, though. He was. I remember like seeing like a press conference with uh, Torrey, and he's like, oh, man, George better watch because Georgie's coming. <laughs> he was... Yeah, he was really good. That's another one of like the all-time great catchers. Jorge's name will go down in uh in history with them. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. How many more we got? Well, I don't. I mean, we got through the big. We're more than halfway. Because we had one through ten is one through ten. So we now skip twenty one and twenty two. And uh, stop at twenty three. Yes. Yes. The twenty three. It's the dawn. Get rid of those sideburns. Yeah, they get rid of those sideburns. Donnie Baseball, only the tenth man to be captain of the New York Yankees. Now he retired in. Uh, when did he retire? Because he, he retired like right after the first time the Yankees did well in the playoffs. He was like, "All right, cool. I I, I got through that." We finally won the playoff series. 
that's Don Mattingly's issue. He was a really great player during a period of time where the Yankees were fuck awful. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, there is a joke about how bad the Yankees are. An upcoming episode of uh, Super and Sexy Podcast. Yep. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, he's freaking. Uh... Yeah, because he retired in ninety five, ninety six, something like that. It was yeah, it was like right after they won like the an opening series, and I remember like seeing like a documentary or something where he was like uh, mentoring Paul O'Neill, and after they won that game, he went running for Paul. Oh well, that explains why I always like Paul O'Neill so much. Because he was Donnie's boy. Uh, Mr. Burns kicked him off the Springfield team, but he still likes him better than Steinbrenner. Of course. <laughs> All right, I don't. I don't even know who's next because now you're well, getting. Who's into next this. is the person I displaced. Okay. Because I mean they are important to, important enough to go last, so it works. We skip a bunch of numbers now and go to thirty-seven. Casey. Casey Stengel. Casey Stengel. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's all right. I you misplaced him, but yeah, we should we should talk about him. Man. So that's like uh how many how many Casey's have are you familiar with like as a name synonymous with baseball because of him? Like the ballpark, like the, the place where you can get the ballpark Franks is called Casey's. It's not. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's not coincidental. It's named after Casey Stengel. He's a longtime manager and uh, a very important figurehead in Yankees history. Born in 1889, baby. Damn. <laughs> Died in 75, so we had a good long run. You know, yay. Very long life, too. 54 years in baseball. He looks very grumpy in this picture. Ten pennants, seven world titles in twelve years as man. Insane. All right. Next is a number that's actually two people because everyone has forty-two retired for Jackie. Oh yeah, but I I know who else wore number forty-two on the Yankees. Mo, the single greatest closer of all time, got a standing ovation at Fenway when he left the mound. Standing ovation at Fenway Park. That is true respect. That's our 4 2 respect. <laughs> our 4 2 fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a, uh, what a, what a great friggin' pitcher. Just one of those. I, okay, so I've got the, the N64 Ken Griffey Jr. game, right? Mm -hmm. I always plays the Yankees. And they tell you, like, because they, they have a very simple baseball mechanic in there. And they tell you, like, their accuracy. There's three specific pitcher statuses. It's accuracy. Uh, it's like power, accuracy, and then stamina. Yeah, and his, his, his is like, them. and then his is like 10, 9, and 1. He's like the least stamina pitcher because he's the closer. So if you bring him in, he's only going to be good for that one inning. And then you got to get rid of him. Yeah, he's only got he's only got to take make nine ten pitches anyway. <laughs> he's got to bring in that cutter and just cut him. Yep. It but rules. he's uh, what was what was some it was like a crazy statistic like like more men have been on the moon than have like gotten a run off of Mariano Rivera or something like that. Like there's like a crazy statistic that I have to look up that there's like. Like, more people have done something that's really, really not common than have gotten something off of Mariano Rivera. I gotta, I can't look it up because I, I'm using the computer to record right now, so I can't kill the full screen, but we'll have to look that stat up some capacity. I do have my phone sitting here. Maybe I can pull that up on my phone real quick, but we can continue the slideshow while I'm looking up that stat. All right, when we move to number 44, he is Reggie. the straw that stirs the drink. <laughs> I don't even, you don't even have to say it. That's Reggie Jackson, number 44. Now that's... Played for Oakland, and then they got him. Yes. 
But what what was he most synonymous with though? Would be a Yankee, right? And then he ended up, I think, in the Angels at one point. Yeah. yeah. Mr. October. Mr. October, because that's when he came alive. Was uh, a number retired and entered the Hall of The same year. That's insane. Came to the Yankees, and him and Billy just did not get along. <laughs> Two, okay, I just found something. Two insane stats sum up Mariano Rivera's career. Yeah, okay, here it is. Yeah, it, it was a moon stat. Twelve people have walked on the moon. Eleven people have earned runs during Mariano Rivera's postseason. So, more people walked on the moon than have gotten a run in off of postseason Mariano Rivera. Jeez. And we haven't even gone to the moon in like 30 years, bro. And since 1920, years, since 1920, there's only been one pitcher to throw 11 seasons of at least 50 IP with an ERA under two. Mariano Rivera. Think about that for a second. But not take anything away from Reggie, of course. I just I wanted to look that up because it was going to bother me if I didn't you actually. Got a three home run game, bro, in the World Series too, right? Yeah, that's that's his big. Ah, uh, that was his big, his big, uh, his big notoriety of fame, right? Was the famous three home runs? Yeah. Dude was. Yeah, he was. You know, he was actually on Oakland the longest, but yeah. As he started his career, so he probably did like his full like seven, eight year rookie contract. And then when that was over, he came to the Yankees. Skip a number and we get to 46. <clears throat> 46. Oh, yes. Possibly my favorite pitcher of all time. I, I actually did not realize that Andy Pettit's number was retired. I don't think I actually knew that. 2015. So decently recent, yeah. I didn't realize they retired number 46. That's crazy. Good for him. Andy Pettit. Yeah, I, I love Andy Pettit. Great pitcher. He was, uh, again, he was one of the pitchers in that era when they had David Cohn, <laughs> David Wells. They had, um, oh God, who else Raj. did they have? They had Mendoza. They had a crazy amount of good pitchers. They had a Deke Arabu. Remember him? Yes, I remember Hideki Arabu's arrival. It was like the biggest thing for the whole week. And they're like, and we're going to be showing that game live. <laughs> but yeah, Pettit was a fantastic pitcher. And again, I, I legitimately didn't realize his number was retired. So that is that is my bad. He is... All right, we are skipping Ron Guidry, but his number is retired. <laughs> 49. Okay. Bernie! Bernie Williams, one of my favorite Yankees of all time. Center fielder, number 51. I have a, I have a really funny uh, Bernie Williams story. So, so... Bernie was second base, and we were talking about a. Uh, we were talking about there was there was some Yankee who had a problem throwing to first base, and I couldn't remember the guy's name or throwing to second base. Could not remember the player's name, and it was it was a current player, so it's not the guy whose name is about to come up. It was a current player, and I'm like, who is that Yankee who can't who can never throw to Bernie? And my my coworker at the time just goes. Huh, I didn't realize Chuck Knobloch was back on the Yankees. <laughs> I just started laughing because there was more than one. There was a guy named Kyle or something like that in like the early 2000s. Cannot remember that player's name for the life of me. But yeah, but Bernie himself was a great... He was a really good runner. That was a big thing with Bernie was he could run. And I think he's got a pretty good uh, stolen base record, doesn't he? 
I don't know. I just remember I was at my great aunt's house for like a birthday party and we were downstairs a bunch of people a bunch of the family were downstairs watching a yankees playoff game and one of my cousins was like i could watch bird this run all day <laughs> yeah he was a runner great player though love bernie williams 51 that is the highest number we have. They have retired. So, so is that is that it then? No, because we have to go back. We have to get number twenty, and we are going to go back, and we're going to end with something historic. Because this man is the first black player to play for the New York Yankees. It's Elston Howard. Ah, there we go, Elston Howard. He was number thirty-two. 32. I was like going around picking people and then I realized I was on the team and I was like, well, I got to go back to Elston because he was the first black player on the team. Oh, see, I thought when you said you you had it out of order, I thought you actually put somebody back in the in the order. Okay. No, nope. he's number 32. 32. Yeah, first black man to ever play for the Yankees. Two-time gold glove. He was a catcher. Okay, so I didn't I didn't get emotional looking at all the nostalgia. But it does make me realize that like you know, all right, so you can you can love and hate the Yankees all you want and people who hate the Yankees are always going to hate the Yankees and that's fine. I get it. They're a dynasty. They're it's it's the same. I feel like that I can relate to it because I hate the Patriots and that's like the Yankees of the NFL, right? They always win. They're always on top. They're always noted for stuff. They're always being accused of cheating. Whether or not they do or not is irrelevant because they're always being accused of it. They're always being accused of buying up players, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, I do I do get it. But at the same time, you can't also deny the legacy of the players who've come through and wore the pinstripes. You just can't. And anyone who's a true baseball fan, even if you hate the Yankees, still know that there's plenty of them out there that would be respected and you can respect. And I've got a lot of friends that are Red Sox fans, but they always say the same thing, except for the ones that are really just like dicks, which, of course, there are Yankee fans that are dicks, too. They're the ones that always go, 27 rings. <laughs> That's their literal only comeback. But all my friends who are Red Sox fans all agreed that, like, Mo was great. Jeter was great. They have respect for all those classic players that we just talked about. Nobody hates Mattingly. Nobody hates Yogi. Nobody hates... Uh, I mean, nobody's going to hate Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig, you know? Maybe people are going to hate Billy Martin, but, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. Hey, he was at WrestleMania. Yeah, he was. He was. He was indeed. But, yeah, that was... That was fun. That was a fun slideshow. Uh, you guys got an idea for a slideshow that you want us to do? You guys want to be on the slideshow show? All you got to do is let us know. Write to me or write to Dan. Maybe we'll uh, we'll include you. You can check out all the slideshow episodes on the playlist, including one I did with Jeff Trellowitz and the one I did with my wife, Shannon. So we got some variety to enjoy. But yes, thank you for the slideshow and the memories, Dan. Appreciate it. Hmm. What's coming up next? I don't know. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. But we'll be back with another slideshow show in the near future. See ya. Bye.